Today's about showing you how I grow and put up enough onions to last us for a year, but here's something else cool. Right now, you can get a year of Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world, for up to 65% off. That means you can learn a new language for less than $5 a month. Over 10 million people have turned to Babbel. Hey Babbel, thanks for sponsoring today's video. I try to live my life in the posture of learning new things, whether that's growing onions or learning to speak Spanish. And if you've been wanting to learn a new language, why not now? Click the link below the video to get started. Babbel is unique as a language learning resource because native speakers teach the students in real life dialogue through podcasts, live lessons, or small lessons on the app that you can work through in just 10 to 15 minutes. It's so effective, it's proven to get you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. I also have the pleasure of practicing some of my new Spanish skills out on a few neighbors, though this primarily revolves around food and la cebolla. Learn a new language with Babbel by clicking the link right below the video right now. For less than $5 a month, you can connect more to the people around you, dive into learning their language, and learn to speak it for yourself. Each year in our market garden, we grow a lot of onions. And then we save these onions in our root cellar and we eat them for an entire year. In fact, we just finished eating our last onion that was almost a year old. And in today's video, I wanna show with you how we grow and harvest and store onions for year round eating. The most important thing to remember when growing onions for year round eating is that it matters what type of onion you grow because not all onions are meant for storage. So this harvest that we're pulling out today actually starts back in February when the seeds were sown. I cluster planted my onion seeds, which means that I plant just four or five seeds per cell in normal potting soil. And when the onions are like small blades of grass, I transfer the entire plug out into the garden Yellow of Parma is my favorite yellow storage onion that I grow, but I also grow Patterson, which is a purple onion, and Red Wing also. These are all great varieties for storing long term. You can get onion seeds from a lot of places. There's a lot of different varieties available. Just make sure that you try to find one that says for storage. This affects the type of skin that the onion will grow, the sugar level that it has, and ultimately how it will store year round. These onions require very little of me in the garden. In our market garden, we utilize a no dig gardening method. And there's a lot of other videos on the channel about that if you'd like to check them out. But honestly, I barely even weeded this garden. I just popped those onion plugs in and tried to keep the squash from totally taking over the beds. And that's it. And look what's coming out. We have had an extraordinarily hot summer here, which the onions really like. And they tell me that they're ready to be harvested when the tops have sort of fallen over and started to die back. It means that the bulb has done what it's going to do, and now it's time to pull them. Some of the onions are really big, and some of them are really small. but. On the whole, I'm extremely pleased with how this cluster planting has worked for the onions. It meant that instead of transplanting each onion blade by blade, I was able to just plant the whole chunk in one 
swoop and it made it so much easier to transplant and so much easier to weed around. I am really happy with the size and the harvest that we're getting out of this market garden. When I'm planting these onions, I try to calculate two onions per day for the year until we get next year's harvest. So that means we're growing somewhere between seven and 800 onions. That's a lot of onions, but they're a really easy crop to grow. And if you have the room to store them, they really will last. Some days we use more than that, such as if I'm making a French onion soup. And some days we don't use an onion, but on the whole, this is how many I grow to account for our family of sixes eating habits. You can see with this cluster planting how the onions actually just sort of push away from each other and grow out. On the whole, I would say that cluster planting made absolutely no difference in the overall size of the onion bulbs versus planting them in a row. And this was about a hundred times easier. And this is a very important crop for us to get right because this is one of those crops that we don't just enjoy fresh, we don't just enjoy once a year. This is a crop that affects our daily life in the kitchen all year round. So we gotta get it right. Once all the onions are pulled, we need to let them go through a curing process. There's a lot of different ways that farmers do this. Where I live, it's hot and it's dry. Humidity and rainfall are not really an issue this time of year. So I'm going to be hauling the onions out of the market garden and I'm going to be laying them in a single layer right on the grass underneath a shady tree. I cannot just leave them out in the garden bed or the sun will scorch them. And I know this because I've lost an entire crop by doing it wrong before. I'll let the onions cure for three to four days in the shady spot in a single layer. Maybe I'll go out once or twice just to kind of move them around or rotate them. In this time, two things will happen. The skin on the onion will get harder and drier. This is what protects the onion, so that's really important. The second thing that'll happen is that the green top of the onion will dry out, like you see here. The result of that is that I'm able to braid them and they're not going to rot in those braids. If I were to braid them fresh, the green tops would be much more likely to rot and cause problems in long-term storage. So now the tops are dry, but they're still braidable. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I am just braiding the onions together, adding an onion each time. The 
reason that I braid my onions instead of just cutting off the tops and keeping them in bins is really twofold. The first is that I find it saves a lot on storage space on the ground when I can hang the onion braids on the wall. It also keeps them a little bit free from pests because it removes them up off the dirt floor of the cellar and it allows more air to circulate around the onions, ultimately allowing less of them to rot and more of them to stay fresh for eating. So as the months go on and you're storing your onions, you might notice that some of them sprout a green top. That's okay. I cut that off and I eat it just like you would a scallion. And then I use that onion for making stock. You'll also notice that some onions just go rotten and that's okay too. On the whole, it's very few of them that do this. Really, when you're storing them correctly and you have a storage variety, they will hold really well. If you do have a rotten one, just yank it out and throw it away. It's not a big deal. This is one of those moments where I'm very glad that my grandmother taught me how to French braid when I was a young girl, because that's exactly how I do these. Each strand goes to the middle, then the opposite strand goes into the middle, and an onion is added. Now you just repeat that about 800 times. If you end up with a weird onion, I usually cull those at this point and use them first because if there's some sort of problem with how it's formed or how its skin is on, it won't last as long in storage as the others. So just go ahead and make a soup. I usually take my braids until they're about 18 inches long because this is about the weight that the nails in my root cellar will hold. So once it's braided, I'll just take a piece of my gardening twine and tie it as tight as I can. As the top of the green onions continue to dry the rest of the way, they'll shrink a little bit. So you really want to get the twine as tight as you can initially so that as those tops shrink a little bit, you don't lose so much tension that the braid falls down. The result of all this work that started back with a dream and a packet of seeds in February has resulted in so many beautiful onions. The backbone of the kitchen, the workhorse, the underappreciated hero of almost every dish that we prepare. A boost for the immune system and a boost for flavor. Down some old rickety stairs from my kitchen is our root cellar. And this is where the onions will live. It has a dirt floor, so the humidity is really regulated by what's going on outside, whether it's wet or whether it's dry. It doesn't stay perfectly cool in the summer, but it also doesn't freeze in the winter. And overall, it seems like a good place with moderate enough temperatures that the onions hold really well. One of the main important things about storing onions is making sure they're out of direct sunlight. Because if those bulbs see the sun, they're gonna wanna make a flower. They're gonna bolt, and that's when those green stems start to come out. So I only ever keep one braid in the kitchen at a time that's the one that I'll cook from for the week, and then I'll replace it with a new one when the week's over. Mm -hmm. 